Rivki, you on mute. Thanks. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm um, starting today. We are in the last chapter of um, of the of Halal Kuf Yud which is 118. So last week we finished with um, Kuf Yud Zion, 117, the shortest capital of Tehillim um, that there is, just to Psukim. And today we go on to Perik Kuf Yud Ches, 118, which is a similar theme. Got a it seems almost to be continuing from the last um, from the last one. Not exactly the same, but a, a similar um, theme of um, instructing people to call out in thanksgiving um, to Hashem. So um, Kuf Yud Ches is quite a long cha chapter, um, but it has in it a few different, a uh, few different like paragraphs, few different ideas or themes. By most opinions, Kuf Yud um, Ches has got two main um, ideas of what it's um, or of how it can be interpreted. The one idea is that this is written by David Hamelach right after um, King Shaul dies. And he actually sings almost in joy or relief. Um, you know, thank you, Hashem. I don't have that scary life that I had while Shaul HaMelech was pursuing me. Um, but that, that would be like the simple understanding of this, um, a deeper understanding. And I think the one that applies to us more is that this is the song of joy that we'll be able to sing in completely when Mashiach comes. We, as we go through it, we'll see that there are um, some things that we can apply to our lives now, but the majority of it is about when, is about when Mashiach um, comes, um, where all these things will be, will be clear to us. Um, and then there is um, one small opinion, uh, or one opinion, I shouldn't call it small, um, that this is actually um, written um, to the, by the Jews when they um, came out of Egypt and they're thanking Hashem for letting them out of Egypt after just two, 210 years instead of the 400 years which um, officially they were meant to have in Egypt. So those would be the three um, reasons, so to speak, that, um, that this capital of Tehillim, that this chapter of Tehillim was written. So the first four verses, um, which all seem to be the same, um, the same theme, the same idea, let's read them and then talk about them individually. So it begins, Hodula Hashem Kitov, call out praise Hashem um, because he is good, Kila Olam Chastoi because he is forever good. Yomarna Yisrael, let the um, people of Israel say, Kila Olam Chastoi because Hashem is always good. Yomarna Beis Aharon, let the children of Aharon say, Kila Olam Chastoi because he's always good. Yomarna Yirei Hashem, let those who fear God say, because Hashem is always good. So understanding this at a um, pretty um, simple um, level is the, the introductory line, which says everyone should be calling out to Hashem. Everybody should be thanking Hashem, praising Hashem. And then um, the next few lines telling it who are these, who is this everybody? This is all Jews. This is the house of Aharon. And this is those who fear the um, fear God. So let's look at it um, line by line and understand exactly what David Amalek is saying over here. So he begins with this introductory sentence, Hashem Kitov. Praise Hashem because he's good, because he's um, kind forever, or because he is um, because he is always good. And interestingly, this exact same line concludes this capital to Hillem. Like if you look all the way at the end, the very last line of this capital to is exactly the same. Hashem Kilo Praise Hashem, he is good, um, he is forever, he is forever kind. So let's understand what that means. What does it mean, praise Hashem, because um, he's good, um, because he is forever, he is forever good. And so um, I try to bring um, a few, a few, um, different um, um, opinions, um, explanations for this, uh, for this line. Um, the first one that the Mephoshim tell us, and I think so appropriate for all of us to hear and to remind ourselves, the majority of people turn to Hashem, um, unfortunately, when they need something. Um, turn to Hashem when um, 
they distressed about something, turn to Hashem when they need something. Um, and we forget to turn to Hashem when things are good also. Um, and so this is David HaMelech's instruction to us. He says, Hashem ki When something is good, we, and times are good, and Hashem does something nice for us, then also we have to remember to turn to Hashem and, and um, praise Him for the, for the good that he's, that he's done. And as we've seen in a previous capital of Tehillim, and as we'll see a little bit further in the Psukim over here, thanking Hashem um, or praising Hashem for the good that He does for us, this should be done in private and in public. In other words, um, we should we should spread the word that Hashem is that Hashem is being nice. Or Hashem has done something good for us. Or Hashem has done um, something something happy for us. Um, the commentaries tell us that this is the concept of appreciation, and many many of the Mefarshim go through this um, idea that in, in any relationship, people like to be appreciated. They like to be shown um, that, that they've been appreciated. Um, I read a, a survey of workers um, about like working conditions um, and the majority of people who leave a job, um, it's not because of the salary, it's because they, not, they don't feel appreciated. They feel like um, that they haven't, that, that they're not being um, appreciated enough. And people who earn less often will stay with a job because they feel, um, they feel appreciated. They feel that, that, um, that like what they're doing is being, um, is being noticed. Now, we human beings are a reflection of God. Um, if we have these feelings, we feel good when we are appreciated, then we got this because Hashem wants to be appreciated. Um, and what is appreciating Hashem? What does it mean Hashem wants to be appreciated? When we appreciate Hashem, then we behave in the way that Hashem wants us um, to, be, to behave. Hashem Appreciate Hashem. Um, because that's what he wants from us. He wants us to show appreciate, appreciation. Um, so much so, how much so does Hashem want us to show him appreciation? There's a very strange Gemara, and I'm only telling it to you at face level, not going into it in any big depth. But the Gemara says that Hashem's intention was to make Chizkiyahu Mashiach. And he says he decided not to, and the words of the Gemara, Al Shalai Amru Shira because Chizkiyahu never showed Hashem appreciation after he won any war. So imagine that he was great enough to be Mashiach, but he couldn't be Mashiach because he didn't show Hashem appreciation. Um, so the importance of Heidi Hashem, of turning to Hashem and saying, thank you. Um, thank you for the good that you did for me um, and praising Hashem because of the good, um, because of the good that he does. And we are also told um, this as a good advice. So, you know, the word key can be translated as because, and the word key can um, be translated as if, and it also can be translated as then. Okay, so it will be then. So, praise Hashem, then he will be good, he will always be kind. Very interesting commentary, very interesting idea. It says that if we remember to thank Hashem when he is good to us, he will continue to be good to us. He will continue over and over um, to, be, to be good to us. Um, and this then is a good advice. It's a good um, lesson for us that we should, um, if we want good things to happen, keep on saying thank you. <laughs> keep on showing Hashem how much we appreciate the good things that he, um, that he does for us. On the other hand, a much harsher understanding of this Pasuk, um, Taiv, good, that is Hashem. Hashem is good. We don't always see it. We don't always, it's not good the way we interpret the word good. And David Amelach is probably the best person to be the one to say this to us. He says, Hashem, a person should always be praising Hashem, Kitov, because he's good. Whether we understand him as being good at that moment, or we don't understand him as being good at that moment, or we uh, like what he's doing, or we don't like what he's doing, or we see the things that he does as not good. Um, it is good. Um, and this is why the commentaries say that this 
chapter of Tehillim is specifically talking about Mashiach time, because in Mashiach time, it will be easy to see the key tave that it, um, the good that, um, that it is, that it really, um, that it really is. Um, I saw a story of Reb Elchanan Wasserman, um, and his students were asking him to explain what was going on at was the time of the Holocaust. Um, his yeshiva was going from one place to another, one place to another, and he said, I can't explain to you what's going on. I can't explain Hashem's ways, but I'll tell you a marshal um, to help you understand a little bit of uh, Hashem's ways. And he says, a man went to a farmer and he said, I want you to show me how you plant. How do you get, um, how do we get bread um, at the end of the day? So he says, sure, come with me for the next couple of months and you'll see what I do and you'll see how we get bread. And so the first thing is that they went out to a field and the field had grass and flowers and all different things that fields have growing on them. And he took out um, his plow and he started digging up the grass and the flowers and everything. And the man kept saying to me, crazy, that's a flower. That's a this, that, you know, that's good grass. Like, why are you? I'm plucking it up and the farmer said to him because that's how you prepare the field for um that's how you prepare the field for planting so, okay you obviously you're a farmer you know better and so he carried on with him the next thing the farmer was busy digging holes in this field because you're making holes in your field now instead of having a flat comfortable field you're making holes in it and the farmer said yeah that's what you've got to do it's <laughs> okay i don't understand but you know, that's what you've got to do. And then he saw that the farmer was taking good wheat and dropping it into the holes. He says that that, that wheat that you busy, those little um, kernels that you're dropping into the holes, we could eat them. We could, you know, we could use them. Why are you dropping them into the holes? And the farmer said, that's what you have to do. He's like, okay, I don't understand. It's going to get rotten in the ground. But if that's what you have to do, you have to do. And so it went on. Finally, he sees this miracle. There's a field full of um, stalks of wheat and the next thing the farmer is cutting it down and the next thing he's taking the wheat kernels and he's crushing it into powder um, and each time the man says I don't understand what you're doing you're taking something perfectly good and spoiling it and the farmer says that's what you've got to do that's what you've got to do and um, he says I don't I don't understand this finally the farmer has flour and he mixes his um, dough and he makes bread and this delicious, beautiful smelling um, bread comes out of the oven. And the farmer says to him, now do you understand it? He says, I don't understand it, but I like the bread. <laughs> okay, um, you know, I, I understand that you have to, to do all of this for the bread. And Rebbe Khan Vassaman explained, he said, there is no way we can understand what Hashem uh, is doing in the world. For us, all we see is that he's ripping up flowers and he's making good wheat kernels frot. And, um, and that's, that's what we see of Hashem's actions in the world. Um, what we have to know is that, that it's all part of Hashem's plan so that we get the bread um, in the end. And only once Mashiach comes will we be able to truly understand. Hashem, praise Hashem, because even that which we don't understand is good. His goodness is really forever. So that's understanding um, the first um, the first pasuk um, over here. Um, then he explains who should be thanking Hashem, and he says, "Yemen um, Israel, the Jews should be thanking Hashem. Yemen Beis Aaron, the Kehanim should be thanking Hashem. Yemen Yirei Hashem, and those who fear God um, should be should be thanking, should be praising God." So again. Um, at a very simple level, when, simple, um, when Mashiach comes, um, we'll all be happy. We're all going to be very happy about the fact that Mashiach comes. But this order of Yidon, um, Kayanim, and Yireh Hashem, um, the different people who have been affected by not having Mashiach. So regular Jew, it's a hard life without Mashiach, but we carry on our lives and we just get on with it and we have good days and we have nachas, thank God, from children and we have um, hopefully good health and we have homes. So um, we're living a good life and it's hard for us to think of um, that we really, really, really want Mashiach, right? That Because things are so terrible, okay? Things are okay. Still says David Hamelach, even if you're just an ordinary Jew living a good, happy life, wherever you are in the world, um, praise Hashem and wait for Mashiach to come. Beis Aaron, that's the Kayanim, they're the ones who had the most disruption um, of their lives from their ideal way of life. 
I, I don't even know if Kalem today realize like how different their lives are um, than at how they'll be at the time of Mashiach. Um, in our family, we always joke about it because my oldest son-in-law is a Kayen, and we we always try and like talk about Mashiach um, time. One day he called me and he said, um, when Mashiach comes, I want your challah. And we laugh about it still till um, now. But you know that at the time of Mashiach, the time of Beis HaMikdash, the Kayanim didn't have to um, they, um, earn a living. The people brought them food. Their wives didn't have to make their own challah and want the people brought them challah. They, um, they were looked after, they were nurtured, they, um, everything. And they were busy with their job, working in the Beis HaMikdash. Um, all day, they were connected with godliness, with spirituality. Um, and so for a kohen, nowadays, their feelings mostly are, what a big responsibility, how many restrictions I, I have. They don't realize um, what a good life they, they had before godless, and what a good life again they will have once Mashiach comes. So says David HaMelech, Yemunah Beis Aaron, you kohenim, who don't even realize what you're missing possibly, or who do realize what you're missing, you also need to praise Hashem, um, because eventually you're going to see this kindness. And then who are the Yirei Hashem, those who fear God? So these are the people, any of us who are living, and I think we all have at least some moments of it, if not, if we don't have it all the time, where we ha have a big soul yearning to connect with Hashem. If only I could connect with Hashem. If only I could know what he wants from me. If only I could know what to, like, what I should be doing, how I should be doing. If only I could feel like that I want motivated, inspired, right? These are the Yirei Hashem. The people who want to be connected to spirituality, the people who want to be connected to Hashem. And those we could put in, like, one sentence, we could call them, those are the people who spend all their time yearning for Moshiach. Um, so um, someone who spends all their time yearning for Mashiach and he has the title Yirei Hashem, he's God-fearing, um, he should already now be praising Hashem with the belief that um, Hashem is always good, Hashem is always kind, um, and, and Mashiach will, will come um, soon. The next little theme of this chapter, slightly um, slightly different um, to how it started, talking about when, when a person or, um, should be calling out in praise to Hashem, or even when a person should be calling out to Hashem. So he says, um, translating it the way my English um, to Hidden does, from the depths I call out to you, Anani Bamerchov Ka. Hashem answered me, Hashem answered me um, in a wide open way. What does this mean? And possibly you recognize this um, Pasuk um, that we say it and at the time of blowing shofar, um, the person who's blowing the shofar says it and we re respond by repeating it. So what does what does it mean? What are what are we saying? So Minhametzar, which the majority of um, English translations are saying from the depths, okay? But a metzar doesn't mean just depths. It could mean from tsaras, from the word tsar, tsar, pain. So from pain, even when things were bad, I called out to you. It could also mean metzar, you might um, see in it, a word that you might recognize is mitzrayim, okay? Constrictions, borders, um, limits. So sometimes we call out to Hashem, as we said, from pain. Sometimes we call out to Hashem almost from frustration. We're so limited in understanding Hashem. We are so limited in trying to connect with Him. And we still do. Minham Meitzar, from this place of, um, of being limited, of having like borders, so to speak, around us, restrictions around us. Karasi, we still called out, but take notice who we called out to. And the name of Hashem that's used here is a Yud and a He. If you remember, I think in one of the very first shiurim we discussed the concept of Halaluka. So Ka, a Yud and a He, is not really Hashem's name. It's only half of Hashem's name. And this is again a, a message from David HaMelech. He says there are times where we're in sar, we're in pain, and there are times where we feel frustrated and limited. And we can still call out to Hashem, even if we're not seeing Hashem properly, even if we're only seeing ka, we're only seeing little bits of Hashem, we're only seeing Hashem every now and again, 
we sometimes sing, we sing little bits of Hashem, Karasi, you can still call out to him. And the promise from David Hamela, and David Hamela who knew well, okay, the pain, the tsar, and the limits that he had in, in, in his life, he says, Hashem answers us, and then he answers us, he opens up, he widens our ka. In other words, he allows us to see much more of him. So even though we're still in Galus, we're still in exile, we still have pain, we still have frustrations, we still have difficulties, we're still not seeing Hashem as much as we would like to see Hashem, but Hashem, Merchavka, he widens, he opens up our vision, so that if we were only seeing this little bit of Hashem, we're seeing a little bit more. We're only seeing this little bit of miracles, we'll get to see a little bit more. So even if a person is feeling frustrated, they should look around and see that Hashem helps us to see more of him if we if we want. An interesting halacha to, that um, explains this concept in, in real, um, in, in physical terms, is the halacha of the shofar. So you all know what a shofar looks like, regular Ashkenazi shofar. So uh, this little horn, um, and the law is that you have to blow from the small side and the sound has to come out of the wider side. So even if you were some kind of contortionist, even if you were somebody who thought you were funny, even if you had a big enough mouth to put the wide side of the shofar in your mouth and blow so that the sound would come out of the small side, uh, that would not be a kosher shofar blowing. You have to blow the shofar from the small side and the sound has to come out of the bigger side. And it says it's because of this, Pasuk, Min HaMetzar, from the small side, Karasi, you call out, and then Hashem answers us, Bamerchot, He answers us from the wider side, from the, from the bigger side, which simply teaches us how Hashem um, expands our vision of Him um, in, the, in the world. And it tells us that we can, even in God's time, even in difficult times, we can see more of God. We do have access to Him, um, and we can see um, more, of Hashem's, more of Hashem's greatness. Um, David Amalek continues and he says, um, Hashem li la ira. When Hashem is with me, I'm not afraid. Maya aseli Adam, what can any man um, do, to, do to me? Um, interestingly, says the Medrash, um, that when a person feels that Hashem is with them, then they're not afraid. They, they're not afraid of anything. It doesn't matter who we are. When we feel that God is with us, we're not scared. That's, um, an, um, that's a rule. And the Medrash continues and says that this is not an original possible of David HaMelech, but the first time it was said um, was by Avraham. And Avraham stood before Nimrod, um, and Nimrod said, I'm going to throw you in the furnace if you don't um, bow to me. Avraham said, Hashem li la'ira, Hashem is with me, I'm not afraid, Maya seli Adam, what can you do to me? What can any man do to me? It was said again by Yitzchak when he was fighting with Avi Melech, and again Yitzchak said, Hashem li um, la'ira, Hashem is with me, I'm not afraid, Maya seli Adam, what can any man um, do to me when Hashem is with me? Um, the same passage was said again by um, with Yaakov when he was afraid of his brother a lot of times, as we're learning in the parish at the moment. Um, Yaakov's response, Hashem li la'ira, if Hashem is with me, I don't have to be scared. Maya said, Adam, what can this man do to me, even though he wants to kill me? And finally, the Medrash says it was said by David HaMelech himself, um, when he stood in front of Goliath, and imagine little David standing in front of this big giant that everybody was petrified with, and David HaMelech said the Pasuk, he said, Hashem li la'ira, I feel that God is with me, and therefore I'm not afraid, Maya seli Adam, what can this man, what can any man um, do, do to me? Um, and he then gave us this Pasuk in a capital of Tehillim, it says that anytime a person is afraid, um, particularly if you are afraid of another person, um, this is the passage that we should say, Hashem li la'ira. If Hashem is with me, I don't have to be afraid. afraid. What can a man, what can a person um, do to me? He continues and he says, Hashem li ba'azrai. Hashem is with me with all my helpers. Vani er and I will see um, my enemies' um, downfall. 
So strange wording, Hashem is with me with all my other helpers. Um, seems almost like apikursus. Like, what, what do you mean? Hashem is with me with all my other helpers. Um, and this is an important lesson that David Amalek is telling us, is that Hashem made his world run according to natural um, things. So you may not walk into Louis Botha Avenue and say, Hashem is with me. If a taxi mashes me, then that's what happens. We have an obligation to go with the natural and normal ways of the world. In other words, stop, look, see if the robot turned red, watch if the taxi stopped at the red robot, and then only walk into the street. Then we can say, Hashem li, Hashem is with me, right? We have to do the normal, the normal things. Hashem made his world run according to natural ways. In other words, he made us helpers in inverted um, commas. So you all know the famous joke. I won't take too much time um, telling us you hear about the man who's in, sitting in his house in a flood um, and a uh, uh, guy in a rowboat comes past and says, get into the rowboat. And he says, no, Hashem is going to help me. And then um, somebody comes with a big um, rope to try and help him out. And he says, no, no, no. Um, I, I trust Hashem is going to help me. Um, and then he's sitting on his roof. The water's rising and rising. And he says, uh, a helicopter comes by and says, grab the ropes, get, you know, come get into the helicopter. And he says, um, no, 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 I trust in Hashem. Um, and now the water's getting higher and higher and the man's getting afraid. And he says, Hashem, I trust you. I trust you. Why aren't you helping me? And Hashem says, sir, I sent you a rowboat. I sent you um, someone with, you know, with um, skis and uh, ropes. I sent you a helicopter. You know, I sent you all the things to, um, to help you. And this is Ba'azrai. Um, often we don't look around and see who are the helpers that Hashem has sent us in our lives, whether it's other people, other things, whatever it is, Hashem const constantly sends us helpers um, in order for us to survive um, our, our lives. Um, so it's not a precursor to use Hashem's helpers, as long as we know that that is Hashem's helper. That is um, who Hashem put there to um to get us through our, our difficult um, our difficult times, um, says um, says um, David Hamelach, Tov lachas es Hashem. It's better to um, trust in Hashem or to be sheltered by Hashem mipturch by Adam than to have to trust in other humans. Tov lachas es Hashem. It's good to be um, sheltered um, by Hashem. Or better to be sheltered by Hashem mipturch ben divim than to be helped or to be or to trust even important um, important people, so so it it does it feels much better um, to be helped uh, and to know that the help comes directly from Hashem than to feel um, that we are reliant on um, on other human beings and we we often say these kind of things in different forms. In our benching, we ask Hashem, we should give us parnasa, and we say, it shouldn't be from the hands, lady day, but not asavadam, that we shouldn't get our parnasa through the gifts of other people, of, you know, like regular human beings. We want to feel um, that Hashem himself is looking, is looking after us. Um, interesting that it says, mibtach um, ba'adam, then trusting in and it doesn't say a man, but it says trusting in the man. Ba, with a comet's under, um, turns the word into a definite word. In other words, it's not a man, but it's the man. Um, and the commentary say that we all have someone who we think is like the most powerful person on earth. Um, and goes further, if you have a look at the next, in the next passage, where it says, Mibtach bin Adivim, um, trusting in, um, important people, powerful people. We all have um, powerful people who we think is the man. So like people thought, either they thought that he was or he wasn't. Um, Trump was the man who was going to save all the Jews, right? And he was going to move the embassy and he was going to do this and this is going to be good for Israel. And we very often put our trust, our faith in one important um, person. Says David Amelach all those years back, it's better to trust in Hashem than to trust in anybody, <laughs> whichever, whether it's the man who we think is the man, or whether it's the powerful man, you know, president of the United States, or whoever that is, rather a person should be trusting um, and finding shelter and finding trust um, in, in Hashem. Um, also, um, say the commentaries that um, Yecheskel had a vision, 
And in his vision, he saw Hashem running his world um, and he saw a vision of a man um, as like, that was the way Hashem wanted his world to run. Um, and say the commentaries that David HaMelech was saying, yes, Hashem does want his world to run with humans being in charge of different kind of thing. The man, okay, the human is running, um, is running the world. But even though we know that that's the, the way that Hashem made the world to run, still our job is to believe in Hashem. Tov lachas is by Hashem. Um, we need to trust in Hashem even more than we trust in um, all these other um, these other humans. Um, okay. Um, then David Amela continues and tells about his his life, and he says, "Kol goyim saravuni, all nations surrounded me, b'shem Hashem, um, to um, to dis- well to destroy me, uh, but in the name of Hashem kiamilam." Um, they were cut down. Um, just reading the next two took him because they were connected. Sabuni gam sabavuni. They surrounded me and they surrounded me again. But I trusted kibeshem Hashem in the name of Hashem kiamilam that I would be able to cut them down. Sabuni chidvarim. They surrounded me like bees. Duachu keish kaitzim. They um, try to kill me like a fire with thorns, b'shem Hashem, in the name of Hashem, ki amilam, I was able to, um, to cut them down. Um, so David Amalek had many, many challenges, many nations, many people who tried to cut him down. And David Amalek says, they surrounded me, <laughs> many times they got me. And if you've learned um, Tanakh or even just heard a few stories of, of David Hamelech, um, you know that David Hamelech had many very close encounters with being surrounded and killed by various enemies, most notably Shaul Hamelech. Um, most famously, um, David Hamelech was in a cave and a spider made the web over the cave so that, David Hamelech, so that Shaul Hamelech wouldn't find him. Um, and so he says, so many times I was surrounded and almost killed, almost found and almost killed. He says, I, you know, I was surrounded I was surrounded again, I was surrounded again, and yet Hashem allowed me over and over and over again to be saved, okay, to cut them down and be saved, which would explain that first level, as I explained, that this capital of Tehillim was written, um, was written um, when Shaul HaMelech died, and David HaMelech was able to rejoice in his relief that he didn't have Shaul chasing him anymore. But talking about um, the, the Jews and the time of Mashiach, so again, David Amalek is saying that we have been surrounded um, by um, goyim, various goyim, over and over and over, over the years. So whether it's been um, Sancheirev surrounding Yerushalayim, um, whether it's been Nebuchadnezzar surrounding Yerushalayim, whether it's been the Spanish Inquisition or it's been the Holocaust, whatever it is, Sabuni Gam Sabuni, the Goyim have surrounded us over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and the only thing we could do in these cases is trust in Hashem, B'Shem Hashem, Kamilam, we've got to trust in the name of Hashem um, that he'll help us, that he'll um, cut them down. And he uses interesting, um, an interesting marshal to explain how, um, how they come at us, how did the game come at us? So he says, Sabuni Chidvarim, they surround me like, um, like bees. Um, many times say the commentaries, um, when the goyim attack us, when they surround us, when they try to get us, it's to their own detriment. Just like a bee um, stings and it's going to die from stinging um, afterwards. So many times the nations of the world have gone for the yidden and it's been to their own detriment and still they, and still they do it. Um, it says um, bees also, you can hear their noise from very far away. You know? The Vuvuzelas. You can hear the bees from very, very far as they come nearer and nearer and nearer. And this is the way that the Goyim have traditionally gone against the Jews, that they've been mumblings, they've been um, sounds that that they are coming for us from very far away until they gather and come for us. Um, um, a bee also thinks that it's making honey for itself if we could know what's going on in a bee head, in a bee brain. But bees know that their job is to make honey. They've got to go out and they've got to collect their, um, the pollen and then they've got to come back to their, um, to their hive and they've got to make honey. 
Um, actually, they're not making honey for themselves. <laughs> yeah, um, bees don't really eat honey. They feed the queen bee. They, they, that, that's not. And the same thing with grain. They think that they're going for the hidden for their own benefit, but says no, they are not. <laughs> okay, they normally are being. Um, they, they are normally being. Um, motivated, inspired by um, hatred, by other people who hate us, by other people who want power um, against us, and not for their not for their own um, um, benefit, not for their own um, welfare. And David Amel says, "Look at that! Look how many game went for us when it was not to their um, benefit at all." Sabuni chidvayim. They surrounded us. They went for us like bees, um, like bees do. And then he also gives us another picture. They came to us like a fire on thorns. So if you want to make a nice fire, you need good firewood. Um, if you try to burn a few thorns, it makes a big fire for a few minutes. If anyone has ever tried that with a braai, um, and they try to make a fire with a few thorns, a big flame comes up and then it dies down and there's nothing left. There's nothing left to, to um, burn. And says so that most times with a goyim, when they go for the yidden, it looks bad to start, okay? It's this huge, big um, flame. And then Ka'ish Ka'itzim, like the fire again of, on thorns, it turns to nothing. They didn't benefit. They hurt us a bit, but they, they themselves didn't benefit. And why is that? B'Shem Hashem Ki that Hashem was watching and he cut them down, okay? Or he allowed um, us to, to um, cut them down. Um, and he continues and he says, They constantly pushed me to fall, but Hashem Azarani and Hashem um, and Hashem helped me. Um, so, um, so again, at simple level, the game have tried over and over and over to make us fall, to harm us, but Hashem always helps us. And the commentaries tell us it is not talking just about physical enemies, but that we also have a Yetzirah. And the Yetzirah does exactly what these physical enemies um, do. The Yetzirah surrounds us. Um, and he surrounds us again. And he surrounds us again and again. And he comes at us like bees. In other words, the Yetzirah doesn't get any benefit from making us um, sin. And he comes at us like thorns. Okay, the Yetzirah doesn't get any benefit, um, um, make any lasting fire. Okay, And he pushes pushes and he pushes, Dafa Dufisani, he pushes us, Limpol, because his hope is that we fall. And how do we manage to overcome the Eight Sahara? Hashem Azarani. Hashem helps us, right? If a person really wants to fight the Eight Sahara, Hashem will help them. He explains, Aziv Zimras Ka, Hashem saves me by Hili Lishua, um, so that I should be able to sing um, his, his praises. Um, and then he's going to go into another um, another theme. The next theme that he's going to deal with is that of the singing of thanks to Hashem, um, which I think we will continue with next time. Please God. Um, in the last um, the end of this the end of this parak. So Thank I wish you. you a good week. Unmute yourselves if you want. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Rivki. It was wonderful as always. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Rivki. Take Thank care. You. Thank you. Have a good Shabbos. Thank Shabbat you. shalom to everyone. Thank you. Good good Shabbos. Shabbos, everybody. Good Shabbos, good Shabbos. Thanks, Rivki. That Thank was you. really meaningful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye -bye. Have a good Shabbat, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Rifki. Thank you Thank so you. much for sending this to me. Thank you. Thank you for coming.
Ross, I'm ready. 